let us discuss about typhoid fever or enteric fever both are same the organism which produces typhoid that is salmonella typhi uh, it's also called as salmonella enterica serotype typhi uh, some infections can also be caused by salmonella paratyphi a or b or c these are gram negative bacilli the transmission is mainly fecal oral route that means through the feces the bacteria come out from an infected person it will contaminate the water source from there another person will get and this bacteria will go and uh, colonize inside the uh, intestine from there it will spread to uh, blood it can spread in acute phase or bacteria can live in gall bladder Uh, as carriers for many months and years uh, during that phase patient will be shedding uh, bacteria through stools uh, this can uh, contaminate the water source and further infect other persons incubation period for salmonella is 10 to 14 days incubation period means once the patient get infected to develop the clinical finding that is a period which can call uh, we can call it as incubation period bacteria enters to the lymphoid tissue in the intestine the pears patches and the follicle swells first then ulcerate then either they heal by uh, natural uh, healing process or it can perforate the intestine can perforate patient can develop peritonitis sometimes patient can develop intestinal bleeding once the uh, bacteria enters the pears patch from there it will go to the blood stream and produce systemic infection their patient can have high degree fever this type of fever is called as step bladder fever that means every day fever will increase uh, nowadays uh, patients will be taking paracetamol so this step bladder pattern may not be visible but when we are admitting patients who is having fever normally we should not give paracetamol for first uh, 24 hours and document fever what type of fever we can know during that period classically it is described as step bladder fever every day fever increases it never comes back to normal uh, but when the patient is continuously taking paracetamol we can observe that patient is having high degree fever which will not come down with paracetamol and every day it is increasing other symptoms are headache uh, weakness some patients can have diarrhea vomiting diarrhea is ma- diarrhea is mainly seen in salmonella uh, paratyphi but it can uh, also seen in typhi abdominal pain is seen in many patients uh, symptoms are severe in typhi than paratyphi paratyphi infections are uh, uh, slightly uh, like the intensity of the disease is slightly lower comparing to the uh, typhi uh diarrhea is more in paratyphi infections now many patients can have rose spots uh, uh which can uh, fade on pressure it is mainly seen in the trunk and chest rose spots are seen in 30% of the patient but in indian population it is not very visible but uh, if the patient is having fair skin we can pick up this uh, rose rose spots Epirus splenomegaly is seen in uh, 3 to 6 percent of the patients. Uh, one classical finding what we see in patients is a relative bradycardia. Normally when we have high degree temperature, the uh, pulse rate also increases according to the temperature. So the pulse rate increases when the fever uh, increases. But this response is not seen in uh, enteric fever. that's why it is called as relative bradycardia it is not actual bradycardia the pulse rate we expect from for the temperature which is not seen that's all cns uh, finding can be there in patients who are not treated properly uh, this finding is called as muttering delirium or coma vigil uh, nervous fever patient has altered sensorium with picking at bed clothes Uh, or threads from the clothes or imaginary objects from the clothes these are the classical finding this may be seen in patients who are who are not treated well very rarely if the patient is not treated properly in the first two weeks third week patient can develop perforation 
one of the important finding what we see in perforation is patient can have severe abdominal pain guarding rigidity uh, normally we have seen that uh, patient who is having uh, typhoid fever they have uh, relative bradycardia but somebody is having perforation peritonitis they can have uh, tachycardia so tachycardia is one of the finding you can uh, you can get in enteric fever with perforation peritonitis other complications like carditis hepatitis meningitis encephalitis nephritis pneumonia orchitis arthritis osteomyelitis uh, most of the uh, in, uh, organs are involved in second and third stage of this disease uh, patients can also have pneumonia febrile seizures febrile seizures are mainly seen in young children uh, many patients uh, become chronic carriers 1 to 5 percent patients can become chronic carriers relapse is seen in uh, around 10 percent of the patient now another important uh, feature so we have seen most of the clinical finding another important feature which can be observed in uh, enteric fever is coated tongue tongue will be coated with white material so uh, the classical findings what we have seen in uh, enteric fever in last few slides are Uh, high degree fever which is step ladder that means every day fever is increasing in spite of paracetamol the fever may not come down that is first and foremost sign then patient can have relative bradycardia uh, expected rise in uh, heart rate is not seen for the uh, temperature so that is very important relative bradycardia third one is quarter tongue see see these three findings are very very important in enteric fever now when we suspect a case of enteric fever uh, initially it will be very difficult to make a diagnosis of enteric fever uh, when somebody present with fever uh, we have to investigate uh, routine blood test like uh, we can ask for uh, cbc complete blood count crp esr crp and esr will be elevated because it's an inflammatory disease Uh, normally in bacterial fever you get uh, high wbc count but this is one bacterial fever where the counts are normal so it will uh, closely mimic uh, many viral diseases like viral disease also you have high degree fe- fever bone pain body pain everything and uh, patient can have uh, normal wbc count or leukopenia so the same thing can be observed here also uh, neutropenia and leukopenia is uh, seen in around 15 to 25 percent but if the patient is having uh, peritonitis again this counts can increase elevation in sgot stpt can be seen in many patients who is having uh, enteric fever and most of the other type of fever also you can get similar finding proteinuria can be there blood culture positivity is very very important so whenever we have a patient who is having suspected enteric fever or any bacterial fever we have to draw for blood culture 90% uh, in first week 50% positivity in second week can get from blood culture bone marrow culture can also be done if you are not getting any other culture stool culture positive in third week so whenever we have suspected enteric fever in first week always draw blood for culture now another important test which is an antibody uh, 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 test uh, that is uh, Uh, voidal test and uh, uh, that detects antibodies to salmonella typhi or paratypha antigens both flagellar o and somatic h antigen here o titer is more important o titer more than uh, 1 is to 160 or an increasing titer uh, both can be diagnostic so somebody is having high degree fever uh, blood culture should be taken then only during second week we can ask for this type of antibody test any uh, fever it is always like that during second week the antibodies will be positive first week we can ask for antigens or uh, blood culture here we are asking blood culture in the first week second week we are asking voidal test voidal test or titer is more important than h titer uh, titer m- more than 1 is to 160 or more or a rising titer both are very very important uh, many patients you can get false positive test or uh, uh, anamnestic reaction so so many abnormal tests you can get in patients but uh, if the patient is having typical clinical feature like high degree increasing fever 
quarter tang relative bradycardia then if vidal is positive in second week then we have to su- suspect strongly and trick fever whatever it is blood culture is uh, very very important in all types of patients who is having suspected and trick fever another test is elisa test that is typhi dot detects igm and igg antibodies against uh, salmonella typhi so that also can be uh, done now when we have a, a patient who is having typhoid fever and we are making a, a, a clinical diagnosis or blood culture positive diagnosis we have to always start antibiotics because it's a bacterial infection it's a gram negative bacilli so we have to start an a, antibiotic which covers gram negative infections quinones were mainstay treatment in uh, endric fever Uh, but nowadays uh, we get uh, many quinolone resistant enteric fever so it is not first line drug nowadays uh, whatever it is uh, quinolones we routinely give uh, ciprofloxacin 500 mg bd uh, or iv 400 mg bd for 10 days or ofloxacin can be given 400 mg bd uh, uh, 10 days uh, so ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin mainly covers gram negative infection otherwise you can go for third generation cephalosporins like cefixim oral 400 mg bd ceftriaxone 2 to 3 g iv od for 10 days or cefotaxim 2 g iv od for 10 days these all are third generation cephalosporins they mainly act against gram negative uh, organism chloramphenicol was uh, once drug of choice then resistance uh, occurred for this drug uh, then we st- uh, we started giving uh, ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin now again resistance started in ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin uh, then uh, uh, ceftriaxone uh, cefotaxim were the drug of choice for many years nowadays we are getting resistance for uh, uh, third generation cephalosporins also either we can go for piperacillin tazobactam like uh, higher antibiotic or we can go back to chloramphenicol nowadays uh, chloramphenicol sensitive organism is uh, seen in many blood cultures if the patient is having cns involvement there we have to use dexamethasone many patients doctors use uh, uh, steroids uh, to give temporary relief to patients but remember in enteric fever if we are using uh, steroids there is high chance for intestinal perforation so we should avoid this but if the patient is having cns involvement we have to give steroids especially dexamethasone it crosses the blood brain barrier so 3 mg per kg uh, followed by 8 doses of so the 8 doses of 1 mg per kg should be given every 6 hourly that is a very high dose for steroids uh, but if the patient is having uh, cns involvement we have to give dexamethasone so prevention of spread we already learned that it is a fico oral route so sanitation should be improved avoid contaminated food or water it should be boiled properly and taken in uh, carriers should be treated with ciprofloxacin 500 mg bd for 6 weeks because uh, this bacilli is mainly spreading from the gall bladder this is one drug which uh, go to the gall bladder and it can kill bacteria but it takes longer time 6 weeks it takes to completely eradicate the bacilli from the gall bladder no vaccines are available uh, uh, vi capsular polysaccharide vaccine is available uh, tab vaccine is available ty 21a vaccine is available uh, so these vaccines should be uh, given if the patient is going to an endemic area or if he is living in an endemic area or suppose if the patient is getting repeated episodes of endric fever because he may be taking food from outside which is not boiled properly or uh, it's a, you, they are using contaminated water in that type of situations uh, uh, we have to use uh, uh, vaccination vaccination can prevent some amount of infections uh, so that should be advised uh, those who are uh, coming to an endemic area uh, from non endemic area or living in endemic area with repeated infection vaccine can be given